So here guys we've got the hold and manage a replayer. We've seen that in quite a few videos previously. Uh, top left corner you've got the pot. The pot odds being offered uh, expressed as a ratio and as a percentage. Okay, and just to touch up on that again, you're making a quote unquote good call, right? Anytime your odds of completing your draw are better, right, or greater than the amount that you have to invest to make that call. Yeah, you've got 15 outs. For example, you flopped an open-ended straight draw and a flush draw. This guy gives you then 3 to 1 pot odds. That means you need 25% equity in order to break even in the long run. Uh, the odds of hitting one of your 15 outs on the turn, for example, is going to be right around you know 30% plus. Um, and so you've, you've got more than this equity, and you can make a so-called good call. Now, what we're seeing here is, um, this is this is us right here. We're playing a big stack strategy here, apparently, on a uh, full tilt rush table in a 100. And the way I've broken down these stats is as follows. The top line is pre-flop, and the bottom two lines are post-flop. And what we want to do here is take a guy where we have quite a few hands. Uh, and I'll just maybe briefly just look at the icons here. Uh, hold a manager and the replayer will give certain icons to certain players based on their stats and um, what that indicates. You see these, these right here, that means a rock, uh, very tight, aggressive, or at least very, very tight players. We've got the eagle stat up there. That's, um, you know, cream of the crop kind of stat. You're playing according to hold a manager. Uh, you're playing with optimal statistics. Um, in relation to the players you faced, okay. Very often, I mean, very often, our stats are going to fluctuate between this eagle and ABC. Somebody who, yeah, plays mathematically sound. It doesn't necessarily mean that somebody's not inventive or not creative, but you know, somebody's playing with solid stats. So you got to watch out for the rocks. Watch out for the ABC guys. Definitely watch out for the eagles. Um, top left stat here. This is your fold to a steal in the big blind. Uh, and these stats are used basically in all the coaching videos. So this is very important that you guys understand this. The pop-up that comes up is exactly the same as this stat here, which is his fold to steal percentage in the small blind. And the steal total up top is showing how often he himself steals from the cut off the button in the small blind. Uh, the number in parentheses there is your total in or your total sample size. He's a very active stealer, 53% of the time from the cutoff. Um, and he's had 17 chances where he could have stolen. That means basically, you know, uh, he's stolen more or less nine times out of the 17. Fold two, fold versus a steal when he's in the big blind. So you see this versus steal underneath, uh, and the small blind in the big blind. That's what those um, acronyms represent. The times that he's folded, right, 50% in the small and 100% in the big. The amount of times that he's called a steal, just cold, right, and the amount of times that he's re-raised or three bet. Okay, and he's never done that, at least in these 283 hands. Uh, and he's had, respectively, two and four opportunities to do so, and he just didn't. So that's the pop-up here. Again, fold to steal in the big blind, fold to steal in the small blind. And far right is, again, the steal. It's exactly the same pop-up. That's how often he himself steals. Two numbers here in the middle. Very, very important. Um, the first one is your VPIP. Okay, broken down per position, and that's how I've configured this pop-up. And the next one here is your PFR, your total PFR. So uh, this guy has a good good ratio here. Uh, anytime you've got a total VPIP to PFR ratio of about you know, 3 to 2, you're looking at a pretty strong player. We've got this guy here, 191 half. You know, this is more or less a 3 to 1 kind of ratio. That means he's limping too much. Uh, not optimal in, in most game scenarios. Not necessarily bad. Uh, depending on table conditions, but just, you know, as a heads up, we'll get into that in more detail in the future. Anyways, that's, that's a good ratio. It means if this guy's getting involved, he's often raising. And these are the respective pop-ups for that. So again, VPIP here in the middle, top. Uh, his total VPIP is 15%. How often he's cold calling is in 5%, and how often he's limping, as you see here, very rarely 1%. And that's broken down then per position, and again, the numbers in parentheses are the total hands, uh, the total chances that he could have in this case, um, put money in the in the pot voluntarily. You don't want to just look at this total VPIP factor. You don't want to just look at this total PFR factor. You want to look at what those are in relation to their relative positions. Okay, because people, of course, play markedly differently. At least good players when they're in early position, as opposed to when they're open raising from late. Position.
Again, 12% raise here from this guy. Um, top left corner, big blinds per 100. That's how many big blinds he's making per 100 hands. Uh, okay, we only have a sample size of 283. But at this point, he's went Had a couple of good hands, and he's, as we'll see here shortly, super, super aggressive. And yeah, playing, for all intents and purposes, a really strong game, it looks like. Uh, bottom line here, this is your total hands. And that's, again, then a breakdown of what he's won over the last 5 minutes, 10, and 20 minutes. This here is his aggression factor, as we just looked at. And that's broken down post-flop, as you see there. Uh, total, his total aggression on the flop, the turn, and the river. Uh, here you also see check raise stats. And then you've got underneath here versus a missed C bet, a missed uh, continuation bet, how often he himself is betting in position or betting out of position. Right here you've got how often he himself makes a continuation bet. So again, with this factor, this 25 aggression factor, I mean, that's already enormous, right? That's, that's huge. It's way, 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 way too high. Uh, super aggressive. So player actually here, our stat, that's already too high as well in most game circumstances. Not always, but very often it is a bit too high. You know, anytime you start getting over 4 and 5, uh, you're pushing. Even really, really good players uh, have leaks. And a lot of, a lot of times, especially at the... Uh, middle limits, say, middle and low limits, being, being aggressive is, of course, always good in general, but being too aggressive can be costly. And, you know, concerning good players, a lot of their leaks come from being too aggressive and, yeah, picking the wrong spots for their aggression. Right, just a general tip there. Uh, good, we've got here 87% for his C-bet. That's, again, way too high, as we had in previous videos. You know, players holding non-paired cards, non-paired whole cards, are going to miss a flop about 66% of the time. And, you know, making C bets at about that rate is also quite lucrative when you're in position and they check, uh, depending on aggression and their check raise factors. Um, but anyways, this, this is a bit too high, and what we'll do in the next video is kind of look at optimal stats. Now that you've seen how, um, yeah, how these stats are broken down, at least, at least how I've configured them for uh, my online play. Anytime you're, uh, you're pre-flop, somebody then raises yeah there's just one raiser and you cold call for example that's going to be a two bet a so-called two bet pot or a so-called normal pot all right and the way that they've listed that there's just a two bet flop i mean what's he doing on a flop right when there was only a two bet pre-flop what's he doing on the flop when there was a three bet pre-flop so to say good uh he's got a c bet here and i've added to that you know it's fold the c bet raise um and how often he himself in three bets a c bet raise uh, fold to donks and versus a preflop razor, the stats underneath like that. And this here is how often he folds two C bets. And then you see here, of course, he's very aggressive, and this all adds up. You know, he himself is C betting 87% of the time, yet he's only folding the C bets 25% of the time. You can start really considering the stats valid. You start seeing tendencies, let's say, already at 100 hands. I mean, maybe, maybe 200 something like that. Uh, some, I mean, some players, especially when they have data, data mining programs and stuff, they won't even consider any stats valid until they're at 500 or 1,000 hands on a guy. Um, but, you know, in my experience, this is already indicative of how this guy's playing, and you get a pretty good idea, but always take that number in parentheses into consideration when making your decisions. He's folded to C-bets, um, in this case, one time in four. All right, that gives him a 25% fold in normal pots. Uh, in 3-bet uh, flops, he was C-bet once, and of course he didn't fold there. Uh, raising C-bets in and out of position, donk betting himself. Yeah, that's, I think that's pretty clear. Okay, last one here is, again, showdowns, right? How often he's getting to the showdown, that's 13%. And this guy, you know, he's, he's not getting to showdown a lot. It's not because necessarily he's getting pushed off hands, but because of this high aggression, he's pushing other people off of hands. Uh, take that into consideration. When he does get to the showdown, he's won 3 out of 3. Uh, that W dollar sign SD uh, one win saw showdown and that is this number right here so you know when you're looking at post flop streets you want to take these two numbers into consideration when you're looking at the flop you want to take these kind of numbers into consideration right know that this guy's super aggressive on almost every street yeah and that's how these these numbers kind of work together um, bottom line here I've just added this number here he doesn't have any himself this is how often he's um, attempted to steal a limped pot. That means, you know, everybody just limps around, uh, it's basically checked to him, he's in position, he makes a bet, that's a, you know, an attempt to steal a limp pot. The pop-up here is the same as this number here, 
Um, the way I've set this up is here you have a flop and it shows you your total stats, your stats in normal pots, and your stats in 3-bet pots. How often is he folding to a bet in general, completely irrespective of everything else, on the flop? And that's, you know, he's had an N of 6 there and he's folded 3 of those 6, so to say. So he's got a 50% fold to any bet uh, percentage on the flop. How often is he check raising, betting it himself, uh, folding to a raise, etc., all the way down, um, on the flop as the pre-flop raiser, on the flop versus the pre-flop raiser. And those are the respective stats uh, that you can look at. You can pause the video and have a look at it in more detail. Very similar stat here for the turn. This is how often he folds in general to any turn bet, 67%. And this is the river fold to a bet on the river. All of a sudden, my pop-up's not working, but it's essentially exactly the same. He's never folded to a river bet in these 283. That's a very brief overview. Uh, you see our stats up top. Um, we've got, yeah, up here, we've got 83% fold to a steal in the big blind, 77 in the small. We're playing 14% of all hands. Of those 14%, we're raising, yeah, two times in three, say. And we ourselves are stealing about 27%, or at least that's been the case in these uh, 9.8 thousand hands up to that point. Aggression factor 7.9 again is a bit too high under most uh, circumstances. Uh, we ourselves are also making C bets probably at a bit too high of a level there. Uh, folding to C bets at 68% and getting to show down about 22 and winning when we do get there at 44. Bottom left corner here. Attempting to steal a lint pot at 75%, uh, folding to any flop bet 68, folding to turn bets at 60 and at 66. That is a very general overview, and now I wanted to look at this next hand, which gives you a couple different types of players that we'll cover in greater detail in the video on player uh, player profiling. This guy is again more or less two to three V pip to PFR, so it's you know general indication of a decent player, but his aggression factor is only a 0.4, right? So it means he's really really quite passive post flop, right? Even though you know he's got decent pre flop stats, he's C-betting himself 67% and folding to C-bets at 44. Getting to the showdown 60% of the time and winning 44%. And that's indicative of this, you know, kind of low aggression, uh, you know, post-flop, very passive, kind of calling station type of player. Not necessarily, right? And again, we only have 113 hands, so, you know, take it for what you will. Again, the lower you're in, uh, or total sample size, the less you can definitively say about this player's uh, style. Um, this guy here, you see Holder Manager has given him this little cell phone. That's a calling station. So that means, check out the difference here. This guy's VPIP is 33%, right? And he's only raising 5%. Okay, so he's basically every third hand he gets, he's playing. And when he's playing it, he's normally just limping or calling, uh, as opposed to raising here. His aggression factor is also quite low, and you can push him off of hands quite often. He's only getting to the showdown at 9%, but check this out. When he, when he gets there, he's won three times in three. So what that's saying, you know, it's very, this is very clear, even at, you know, 122 hands. This guy is a very clear calling station, um, and very, very nitty, so-called nitty post-flop. That means, you know, he's only going to get to the showdown, you know, with super big hands, and when he gets there, of course, his 100% is, you know, showing how that's working out for him. So-called nitty calling station kind of player as an example. Uh, Holder manager is giving us the ABC tag. Uh, this guy here is rolling the dice, as you see. <laughs> Again, we've only got an N of 136, but, you know, he's basically been involved every third hand he's been dealt, <laughs> and he's raised every fifth hand, more or less, he's been dealt. Yeah. So, um, he's dealing at 37%, which is, again, quite high. But, yeah, respectable for this kind of lag player, and as we saw here, he was, at this point, he's actually up. Uh, he's making 28 big blinds per 100. Uh, but again, the end's very, very low, so take that number with a grain of salt. Uh, he's got a 2.4 aggression factor, which is, uh, you know, it doesn't really speak for an absolute maniac, right? He's not just crazy. Uh, and he's only getting the showdown 20%, and when he does get there, he's won 57% of the time. This is another example. This would be more of a laggy... Uh, gambler type of player. We got a guy here with um, 1.6 thousand hands, and you see here this is a very typical rock. 
He's got a uh, V-pip of 9%, so that means he's only playing every 11 hands. And when he does play, you know, he's he's raising it more often than not. Yeah, that 5% here. Yeah. Mm. Very, very rocky player. He's folding everything. He's folding 98% of the time to a steal in the big blind. 89% of the time he's folding to a steal in the small blind. Okay, and he himself is only steal raising at 11%. So this guy, you know, he's... He's not so positionally aware. He's more or less stealing with the exact same, yeah, not the exact same, but very close rate as he's just making any raise. So when this guy steals, right, you you know that he's got something quite good. When this guy steals, 37%, you know, that could just be basically an 8-2. And we've got 1.6 thousand hands on this Rocky guy, so this is very indicative of how this guy's playing. Percent aggression factor. A bit too low, and yeah, in most table circumstances. But when he's when he's involved, yeah, he's only getting to the showdown 22% of the time. But when he does get to the showdown, he's he's winning more than half of the time, which is quite good.